About a month ago, I made a video. It was about putting Moo OS on my RG 35 xxsp This was a huge step up from the stock OS that the device came with. I freaking love Moo OS. It runs really well, except for that one time where it didn't run really well because I somehow created a bug where whenever I entered the settings page and then left the settings page, the device would go into sleep mode and I can only turn it back on by opening and closing the lid. It was a really strange bug. I managed to fix that bug. Yeah, super smart tech guy over here. Literally just turned it on and off a couple times until it started working again. And then I didn't see that issue come up ever again. But aside from that slight mishap, I'm really happy with Moo OS and there really isn't a reason to change it. But what if I try Newly out? I mean, my grass is pretty green, but the grass can always be greener on the other side. I did a quick Reddit search to see what people prefer and it seems like people are pretty split on whether Newly or Moo OS is a better OS for the Amberdeg RG35XX SP. I mean, it's kind of natural to just go with what people recommend to you. I mean, that's what I did. I just saw someone say like, hey, Moo OS is awesome. And I'm like, sweet, I'll try it. But there's always that voice in my head that's like, what if Newly is better? I mean, maybe not objectively better, but just better for some people. I had to try it out. Plus, I need more content on my YouTube channel anyway, so testing it out was a great idea. So today I'm putting Newly on my Ambernic RG 35XX SP, which I'll just refer to the Ambernic SP or SP because the other name is just too long. Is it good? Does it stand up to Moo OS? And will I be officially switching over the Newly, or will I be going back to Moo OS? Which would be pretty easy to do because all I'd have to do is just take my old SD card and put it back in my Ambernic SP, and that's it. Anyway, let's find out. But first, do that thing where you subscribe and like this video if you like it because I need the support and it's much appreciated. But anyway, on to the video. Let's go. Let's go! Now, there are guides out there that will go in a lot more in depth than I will, but I know there are plenty of people out there who end up screwing up the installation process. So here's a super duper simple and quick installation guide. By the way, I did this on a Mac. The process is pretty much the same with just a few differences, which I'll make sure to describe. Step one, download newly, specific to the device that you're installing it on. We are installing it on the RG35XXSP, which I know I said I was just going to call the SP earlier, but I forgot. From now on, I'm calling it the SP. So download that one. You can get to the download page from Newly's wiki. Go to the quick start guide and click on this GitHub repository page here. Once downloaded, you will want to extract the IMG file. It's about five gigabytes big. Then grab a brand new SD card. I'm using the 64 gigabyte one here. I recommend using a name brand one like the SanDisk. You may want a larger size SD card if you plan on putting a large amount of games on this device, but you don't have to go too crazy because you're not going to be playing anything that's too intense on the Ambernic SP. Plug your SD card into your PC or Mac using an SD adapter like this Anchor one I bought from Amazon. Then you'll want to flash this SD card. You'll need a formatting program like Belena Etcher, which is a popular one. Personally, I like using Raspberry Pi. For Raspberry Pi, you'll select a custom image file for the OS, then select your SD card for the external storage and hit format. Remember, this will delete everything on whatever device you are using as the external device, so don't put something important on there. Once that is done, unplug your SD card, stick it into your Ambernic SP, then turn that bad mother trucker on and bing bang boom, Newly will do the rest. And that's it. Now to add games or BIOS files, you can do it all over Wi-Fi. Yep, no need to ever take this SD card out ever again. Unless of course you miss Moo OS and you want to switch back, then you'll have to take it out. But no, we're not switching out of Newly. we're gonna see what this thing has to offer. First step, let's add our games. Before adding any games, you'll need to connect your device to the internet. So go to network settings, select your Wi-Fi, put in your password and connect. And we're not connected. Now I don't know about you, but whenever I try to connect to Wi-Fi through a Linux based handheld, I've never seemed to get it on the first try. It must be shy or something. If this happens to you, just do the old turn it off and on again and that will do it. Worked for me the second time. Now that your Wi-Fi is connected, turn on your PC or Mac. If you're on a PC, open your Windows Explorer and find the newly device in your network section. If the device does not show up, you can type 
backslash backslash newly in the address bar of your Windows Explorer to find it manually. If you're on a Mac like me, open up Finder, select go on the top bar, then select connect to a server and type in smb colon forward slash forward slash newly. First time I tried it, it did not work. But yeah, I just canceled the connection and tried again. And for me, it worked on the second try. It's just one of those things, I guess. Oh, and make sure you're on the same Wi-Fi network. That's kind of important. Once connected, you'll see all the folders that newly created for you on that SD card you formatted. You'll see a folder called ROMs. Guess what you put in there? If you guessed this picture of Tobey Maguire, well then, um, you're, you're wrong. You actually put your ROMs in that folder, aka your games. Obviously, you, you big dummy. You'll see a folder created for every system. Just drag and copy it over and that's it. The games are on your Ambernic SP. Isn't that super duper cool? Oh, but hold on. You'll need to refresh the game list. To do that, go to game settings, update game list, and update the list. Now you can see your games that have been copied over. Woohoo! Portmaster is an option for newly to play PC ports of your favorite games. If you're a fan of Stardew Valley, well, that's an option. Setting up Portmaster is super simple, but first, quick disclaimer, you'll want your SD card formatted as EXT4, which is only readable by Linux computers, not PC or Macs. If you followed my quick guide here, your SD card will already be formatted as EXT4 and there's nothing else you need to do. The reason why I'm transferring games over internet is because the SD card is formatted as EXT4, which, as I said, can't be read on a PC or a Mac. If you wanted to be able to take your SD card out, put it into your PC, and then try adding games that way, well, you won't be able to. On Newly's Wiki, there is a guide to reformatting Newly to the XFAT format so that your PC can read folders. You'll do it through their internal reformatting tool. They claim that Portmaster does not work as well for XFAT formats. Some games will be unavailable to you, but I believe this has been improving and you shouldn't really see much of a difference either way. In my opinion, it's better to set up Newly the way I explained and just transfer your games over the Wi-Fi, which is much more convenient anyway, so who, who really cares? I guess it doesn't copy as fast, so maybe some people will care about that. Anyway, all that aside, setting up Portmaster is as simple as hitting install. You'll see the option in Portmaster section. You can't see it on my video because, well, I already installed it, but don't worry, it'll, it'll be there. It'll say something like, install Portmaster, and then it'll ask you to make sure you subscribe to 8-Bit Bongo, or it will not work. So yeah, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button right now. This is not a trick, I'm 100% telling the truth. Anyway, when Portmaster is up, you can install any port available, and there are like a ton of them. Modern games like Stardew Valley will require files that you can only obtain from actually purchasing the game, so there's no piracy here whatsoever. Now that we got our game set up, we'll want to change some settings in order to make this device better, so that we can compete with MooOS. The first thing you need to do is make sure you have retro achievements set up, because who doesn't want to earn achievements on retro games and then brag about how cool you are to all the people that don't have achievements? By the way, if you do play retro achievements, come say hi to me on my wall, on my retro achievements account. I love when people comment on this. My name is not the same on retro achievements. It's not 8 Bongo, by the way. It's Papa Zulu. I made it before I came up with the channel name and it just won't let me change it. So, there you go. Next, on game settings, I like to turn it toggle fast forward on. Under sound settings, turn off that front end music. At first it's pretty cool, but then it just kind of gets annoying in my opinion. Of course, you want to set up some artwork for your games. Having an automatic scraper is one of the biggest advantages of Newly, after all. Go to Scraper. I recommend scraping from Screen Scraper. You'll need to set up a Screen Scraper account. Go to ScreenScraper.fr, register for an account, then on your Ambernick SP under Scraper settings, you're going to put in your username and password that you just created at the bottom here. There are some more settings that you're going to want to change to your liking here, like where your image source is going to be. Do you want a screenshot of the game, the box art, or maybe some fan art? The choice is yours. By the way, if you want to change your scraped image, you need to head back to this page and set filters to all, and ignore recently scraped games to no, then hit scrape now. You want to make sure these settings are back to default after so that the screen scraper is only scraping games that you have added and not done artwork to yet. 
By default, Nuli is set up so that when you close your clamshell on the Ambernic SP, the device will be put into sleep mode. Sleep mode on these Ambernic devices is really inefficient, so I actually recommend you set it up to shut down when the lid closes, which you can do by pressing start, go to settings, and then system settings, and then services, and then select the lid shutdown option. If you do this while playing a game, Newly actually first properly shuts down RetroArch first and then shuts down your system. If you turn on autosave on exit for RetroArch, your games will automatically save when you close your lid and shut down. Yeah, close that lid. Shut that thing. Finally, the last setup thing that I want to brush on is shaders and all that stuff. Really, all the default settings run great and average viewers won't give two flying chickens about this. But I was watching a video by TechToeb and he makes a few changes on his Game Boy Advance settings that make the games look fire. On your Game Boy Advance games, press select to update your per console settings and go to advanced settings. Go to decorations, then decoration set, and select default newly. Then go to game rendering and shaders and select the scan lines shader. Now it feels like I'm playing Game Boy Advance back in the day, just like you were a kid again. Nostalgia is a heck of a drug, man. What are my thoughts on Newly? It's great and practical, but it lacks that pizza. Pizza? Frickin' autocorrect changing my script to saying pizza. Now I sound like an idiot. No, it lacks the pizzazz. I love my Miu Mini primarily because of the OS. It has a great OS with a passionate following, and it has pizzazz. Lots of custom themes, little apps and trinkets, a convenient game switcher. It was an OS specifically made for the Miu Mini. It's like a match made in heaven. I get giddy when I start up on your OS on my Miu Mini Plus. I freaking love that operating system. Newly feels more generic. Part of that is due to the fact that it's a fork of Batacero. Batacera? Batocera? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Just roast me in the comments already. And using Emulation Station. But also because it just feels like it has been copied onto another handheld and functions the same. But because of this, it's more stable and universally accessible. I haven't run any issues yet, and MuOS had that one weird glitch I mentioned earlier where the screen would go literally dark on day one. It's a good solid OS that is very convenient and easy to set up, and if you need a quick solid OS that is not the stock OS, you should install it. But I'm not sure I'm going to use Nuli over MuOS. Don't get me wrong, Nuli is amazing. Great work by the developers, but MuOS just feels more at home. For one, the themes are just better on MuOS, and there are a ton of them. Newly has quite a few, but to be honest, I don't think they're all that great, at least the ones that I tested. I just ended up using the basic theme, which is on a bunch of emulation station devices. Like look at this Pokemon custom theme on MuOS, you just can't compare. MuOS also has a more sophisticated auto shutdown feature. With MuOS, you can first have the device go into sleep mode when you close the clamshell, and then let X amount of minutes pass before it actually shuts down, or you can just have it shut down right away. On top of that, you can have MuOS boot right back into your game when you start it back up. Like Newly, MuOS will properly shut down the emulator so that when you turn on autosave in RetroArch when quitting, you can essentially have a seamless process of closing your clamshell, put your device away, do that thing you should be doing in the real world like walking your dog or playing one of your other retro handhelds, turn back on your Ambernic SP, it'll boot right back to where you left off, and boom, you're playing again. With Newly, you can only have it go into sleep mode or turn off completely when you close the shell. No, in between. Plus, it won't boot back into your game. At least, not that I'm aware of. Another important feature that's missing from Newly that MuOS has is the wait for network option. This is huge for people that love retro achievements. Basically, MuOS has a feature that will force the console to connect to your Wi-Fi before booting your game. If you play with retro achievements, you know how annoying it is to start up a game that's not connected to your RetroArch achievements account because the Wi-Fi hasn't been connected yet. Then you have to quit the game, restart it in order to register your retro achievements account. No need to worry about that with MuOS, which I flippin' love. Newly doesn't have this feature, which is okay because it doesn't automatically boot into your games when you turn it on anyway. You'll just need to make sure you make a mental note of waiting for the Wi-Fi to connect before you actually boot a game. Box art scraping is a win for Newly, mainly because it's super simple and done over Wi-Fi. For MuOS, the process is much more manual, requiring a little bit more of advanced tech skills. There are some scrapers you can download and install yourself on MuOS, but the process is much more tedious than just logging in with your screen scraper credentials and pressing a button on Newly. For updating, both Newly and MuOS require manual updates, although I believe Newly is in the process of letting you do 
over the air updates for minor updates on the internet. This is a feature that is not yet available though as of this video. Now, let's get into the meat and potatoes. What does 8-Bit Bongo actually recommend? Well, would you be annoyed if I told you that it depends? Because it depends. I mean, yeah, I prefer MuOS. It feels more fun and nostalgic. I love the custom themes and also that auto shutdown and wait to connect to the internet feature for retro achievements is a godsend. And here's the thing, a lot of you won't care about that. I mean, the average retro handheld enthusiast probably just cares about playing games on the most convenient way possible. And aside from the stock OS, Newly is the easiest thing to set up. It literally looks and runs great out of the box. And adding artwork to your ROMs is much easier. And the front end emulation station looks clean as fluff. I don't swear in this channel, so yeah, I, I said fluff. And we all know fluff is clean, unless it's fluff from an ugly, gross couch. That fluff is nasty. Anyway, both OS's are great and get the job done. Moo OS is just a little cooler and I love it. So yeah, I'm taking my Newly card out and switching to Moo OS because that is the OS for me. Only if I can find it though, I'm very disorganized and those micro SD cards are fluffing tiny. Anyway people, that's it for this video, hope you learned something. If you have your own opinion, share it in the comments. I'd like to hear everyone's opinion on this important matter. Newly vs. MuOS, who is the real winner? Let me know. And see you on the flippity flop. Bye.